Select the master controller and the interfacing and uh, the method of microcontroller programming and the uh, example of uh, microcontroller is so uh, selecting the master controller right so first we have to uh, consider few factors right so one thing is the uh, manufacturer. So there are a lot of manufacturers, and they, are, uh, they have uh, different kinds, a lot of different kinds of microcontrollers. So out of that, we have to select the proper microcontroller. microcontroller. Then uh, we have to select the capacity and uh, so when we are selecting the capacity, so RAM and the EP ROM, right? So the memory requirement is the number of input output things. Number of things and then the available of the modules. The modules inside the module control, like the electrical computers and the finance counters and the serial communication and then there are some more things like so, like. Uh, there are there can be like some uh, converters and uh, and uh, like uh, some specific These factors should be considered when we selecting a microcontroller. Right? So it will be different from the system to system. And then so here, these are some of the uh, microcontroller manufacturers. Here, right? So we are using the uh, microchip microcontroller. Sir, sir, after sir, what caddy caddy ahead? How are it ahead, sir? We are using the microchip microcontroller. Uh, which is a uh, thick microcontroller, right? And there are microcontrollers from Atmel, uh, Intel, uh, Maxim, and the National uh, Instruments, and it's uh, a semiconductors. Yes, yes, yes. So, I better serve a caddy caddy ahead, how did I hand that?
tempo Sí, no te ha dicho, ¿no? Espérate, ¿no? Okay, uh, Check, check, check. Um, is it okay now? So can you hear me properly now? Oh, sir. Thank you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry for that. So these are the uh, main many microphone door manufacturers. So, um, so actually these three are the main manufacturers. So we are looking at this uh, microchip, uh, microchip. Uh, so that is from um, uh, we we have a big microcontroller from a microchip. Okay, so then uh, so here uh, these are the some kind some types of uh, big microcontrollers, right? Okay, so here can you see that uh, uh, dual inline plastic packages. So that means uh, here you can see the two, two lines and uh, uh, we can connect this into a breadboard or something like that. And here the second one, um, it is a small outline. Uh, uh, I see plastic packages or so small outline means so actually this is like the surface mount one. right? Uh, so in the next one, it is uh, default flat. Uh, no uh, lead uh, plastic packages so again these two the second these two are the uh, surface mount ones surface mount ones and uh, uh, here we have uh, talked about uh, last time uh, Pick sixteen F double eight seven microcontroller, right? So, so it is available in um, 
all three shapes right so like this um uh, when we are using it in like uh, the purposes like uh, educational purposes or kind of thing so we have this like the uh, these kind of the first kind of one uh, types so uh, actually ma mainly there are two types right so uh, one is the uh, through hole one and the other one is the surface mount mm -hmm. so you can see that uh, the last two these two these are uh, surface mount devices and the first one is the through hole devices so why we need the surface mount one is actually uh, uh, when we are using it uh, these things are used in embedded system so uh, most of the time there is space is a constraint so therefore in order to address that uh, there will be uh, those kind of things uh, when you are using like um, so you may have seen in most of the microprocessors in your in the in motherboards in computers so you will see they will be in like surface mounted one <laughs> so see so here the uh, so it, it's obvious right so the through hole uh, electronic component so they are it has pins so uh, they should be connected by uh, drilling holes in pcbs and uh, the next one uh, the uh, surface mount devices so they they are mounted directly onto the surface of that pcbs so the um, thing is actually uh, most of the time the surface mounted devices they are very uh, small compared to the uh, other types So yeah, you can see. Uh, <clears throat> so when how they are mounted, right? Uh, uh, most of the time, when the uh, circuit board is um, small, these things will be happening by uh, by automated processes, right? So. Uh, because it is very hard to mount them uh, so uh, like uh, if you if you think of like surface mount one so it is it is very much hard to mount them as required by using like the human um, skills right so uh, therefore automated processes are used most of the time <coughs> I tend for if you take a big microcontroller, you can get the architecture in terms of the uh, pin count uh, interrupts and the performance of the operating system and um, the memory and the features and all sort of things. And if you take a look at this is uh, big 16F. Uh, double eight seven <coughs> pick sixteen F double eight seven. So in this uh, pick sixteen F uh, double eight seven. So actually, um, uh, as I have. <coughs> I uh, told you last time, so if you can remember uh, how many ports, so how many pins are there. So there are like, here yeah, I can see it, there are 40 pins, right? And uh, there are how many ports? So there are like uh, uh, four 8-bit ports, right? Four 
8 bit ports and uh, there's one there's one uh, 3 bit 3 bits port right so you can see as r e 0 r e 1 r e 2 right so port a b c d they have 8 bits each right they have 8 bits each and um, port e it has Uh, three bits right so here not one pin is then so 30 2 plus 3 it is 35 right 35 then there are pins the power pins uh, four pins right and also there's that master clear pin so like that there are uh, pins in uh, pic 16 f uh, double eight seven so this is an example of uh, pick so um, when we uh, design the circuit right so when we are designing the circuit uh, it is uh, not only the microcontroller <coughs> right so there should be a lot of other things as well uh, connected in the uh, to this microcontroller circuit right uh, so basically there should be like these switches uh, push buttons uh, and uh, sensors uh, LCD displays and uh, relays so likewise and um, should be connected right so they may be connected using the input output ports or maybe using the serial uh, communication modules as well so if you see it as an example, so here you can see um, uh, there will be a lot of things, right? So you may not see uh, all the things from when you are doing the Proteus simulations, right? Because uh, after all it is a simulation right but uh, here you can see so here we have leds <coughs> and uh, here we have push buttons and a uh, lot of things uh, connect into the microcontroller Okay, so I have introduced these things previously as well. So, but if we see it, so you can see um, in here there is a power supply. A power supply should be connected in here and the reset signal and the clock signal as the basic connections right so you can see it in the above right we have this um, 220 volts um, uh, ac main supply right and uh, they are and after that they will there is a transformer and then uh, you have the uh, the rectifier <coughs> okay you have the rectifier uh, with uh, four diodes right and uh, using like uh, lm7805 at the output it generates five volts right five volts and that five volts it is given to in here 
see it is given to this uh, uh, VDD, right? VDD, and see, right? It is given to VDD, so and and uh, that uh, VSS, uh, which is the adjacent pin to VDD uh, pin, so it is grounded, so that will supply the uh, five volts to this uh, microcontroller. And as I have told you, uh, um, there's the uh, master clear pin, right? So master clear pin. So always it should be supplied with a voltage, right? Supplied with the voltage. Uh, because so master clear action is master clear bar that means so mm, uh, when we apply one volt uh, sorry five volts it will take it as uh, master clear zero right but when we apply a reset or the zero volts it will take it as master clear so it will clear it clear the microcontroller <coughs> so that is the first one the power supply and the uh, reset signal right mm. then the next one is the clock signal so you can see this oscillator so we are prov we have to provide this uh, clock outside outside with uh, two uh, very small capacitors so here you can see four megahertz signal is supplied four megahertz signal is supplied so why we are supplying this is it is actually we need to um, we need to run our instruction set according to this clock the clock that we are uh, supplying <coughs> and and uh, the next thing uh, connect in uh, switches and push buttons so <coughs> Uh, here you can see um, how to connect a switch right so when it is not connected when the switch is open it will supply 5 volts okay. uh, it will supply 5 volts but when this switch is closed uh, it will supply uh, 0 volts so then uh, the next one is actually Uh, the next one is actually uh, so it is a push button right so for the push button uh, yeah actually this uh, here you can see that this uh, hundred hundred k right hundred k in here so uh, what will happen is uh, uh, when we push this button, right, uh, uh, this five volts will be five volts uh, uh, will be cancelled, and uh, the um, zero volts will be applied. Right, actually, this uh, resistor and the capacitor it will act as a filter right so why do we need a filter when we have a push button is uh, so not like a switch right not like a switch when we have a push button when we have a push button so actually this they should not be that this much of high voltage high high resistance right so uh, when we have a push button what will happen is uh, uh, it and there's a higher possibility of bounce in that switch okay so therefore uh, 
Yeah, not. Yeah, you have to use a push button um, uh, uh, capacitor. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, this is how you connect LEDs. You already know that you have to connect um, at least at least uh, 220 ohms. 220 ohms resistor. Uh, with the ladies, right? <laughs> then uh, there are some other um, indicators also, right? So like uh, uh, like LCD screen. So yeah, uh, when you have LCD screen, uh, yeah, this is how it should be connected. Right? So we can do these things when we are actually connecting this LED. LCD uh, uh, displays, right? So there should be a control of uh, uh, control in the contrast and the uh, backlight uh, uh, control in the contrast actually. Uh, so when there is a backlight for this LED, this uh, additional five volts should be supplied to. that as well and um, other than that other than that uh, you have to connect some other modules as well so some maybe uh, analog inputs right analog inputs maybe you have to connect and uh, some uh, comparator inputs and uh, some of the timer uh, sources and also uh, interrupts and also uh, the serial communication uh, devices as well you have to <coughs> uh, connect okay so other things right um, and when we are doing uh, microcontroller uh, programming when you are doing microcontroller programming uh, okay, um, we have to use uh, appropriate language for that right so in here um, uh, we are using actually uh, micro C right micro C I suppose that all of you have uh, installed a micro C, right? And uh, so here, this is micro C ID, micro C ID, and uh, so this is the interface right okay so after uh, after we run the program right what we are doing is this uh, program should be loaded into the uh, microcontroller room okay. it should be loaded to the microcontroller room okay and uh, so as we have done, actually, we have done the programming only in the uh, computer, right? And also, uh, we need the programmer. So as I checked also, uh, when we are using um, this uh, uh, big microcontroller, now there's the programmer. Um, now we have the programmer. And... Uh, and if you have the programmer you know, by just using that one uh, and with the uh, computer with micro c you can do the uh, programming right so um, so there are like uh, pre-programmer software as well right 
customers of TAS as well. And uh, if we see the uh, Big Programmer hardware, it looks like this. So Big Programmer hardware. <coughs> so here you can see uh, in, in the blue color one, zero insertion for socket. So you have to uh, insert your Big microcontroller into this, right? And uh, and then you are connected to your device, right? Um, uh, here, this is some very old device, right? A very old device. So here we have this connection in them. There's a serial port, right? Serial port, but now actually we don't have a serial port. We don't have a serial port. Uh, so we have to put our microcontroller into this actually we pick into this then we have to send our uh, program okay so when we load our program right um, when we when we when our program is loaded to that so we have we can uh, take our microcontroller out of that and uh, we can connect it to we can connect that to uh, the circuit right and um, so when it is connecting uh, everything should be there right so uh, the recommended thing is uh, before we uh, connecting or doing anything in here right so you have to do it uh, using proteus so proteus is the simulation software that you can use it is very easy right so you can do the uh, so we in the in our classes also what we are using is uh, proteus right so why we are using proteus is when we have proteus we can simulate the thing before we connect it to the device uh, connected to the actual circuit so the thing is uh, uh, thing is uh, uh, that is the standard method right so first of all you have to build your program and uh, you have to test or simulate it with proteus so after simulating it with proteus then only you are going to uh, connect it to the device connected to the uh, uh, circuit um, um, after programming right the thing is um, even though even though you have even though you have connected your um, uh, peak microcontroller uh, to the uh, to the um, circuitry that already built circuitry yeah there's like um, high probability that your uh, pick or that your circuit will not work as expected so this is when this is uh, when we are dealing with pick right so arduino also it is also a microcontroller right so you won't be having that problem when you are working with arduino because most of the cases so you are using this arduino development board and everything is there right but uh, let's say if you are using not uh, uh, not arduino let's say you are using pick so when you are using pick and uh, if you don't have a development board for pick microcontroller all the circuitry you have to connect it by yourself right so when you are connecting it there's a high chance that your circuit won't work at the first time okay so uh, so if you are not connecting and if you're not simulating it with proteus uh, um, then you cannot un uh, then you cannot verify whether your program works well because most of the time the pro the uh, circuit won't work because of the connections of the circuit right uh, connections of the circuit so then what you have to do is you have to check each and every pin and each and every connection using a multimeter right but actually uh, uh, when you are using this um, 
proteus at least you can you can be sure whether your uh, uh, program is working correctly um, okay but um, because uh, when you connect it there's like 100 uh, and there can be like 100 errors uh, even though you have done everything correctly so there can be like there can be like errors like uh, uh, when you are implementing this these things in a breadboard so that is the that's the next thing right before you solder or doing uh, any soldering what you have to do is you have to uh, you have to uh, try that thing using um, a breadboard right so you may have seen breadboard so before you go in before you solder you had write in a breadboard so i if the if you, if it is working in the breadboard only uh, you could start to uh, uh, solder right um, otherwise there will be a lot of errors okay so oscillators roll um, uh, is similar to the um, it is similar to a clock right so okay okay so based based uh, on its clock okay based on its clocks its clock uh, the microcontroller execute the instructions of the program <laughs> okay. microcontroller execute the program so if you see um, some examples for this interface in circuit it looks like this right so this is implemented in a breadboard right so you can see the microcontroller and the leds and the all the other things that is connected with this so so this is another example with uh, lcd screen right so is right okay, actually the uh, thing that uh, it is uh, somewhat hard to work with uh, this microcontroller pick is uh, <coughs> for this circuitry uh, we have to uh, we have to uh, provide power from outside right so not like in arduino arduino so here if we take this so this is not a development board right so can you see there's a motor and everything right and for this thing we need to supply power uh, outside so that five volts should be uh, generated by ourselves right so using um, using a regulator by using this ac mails and by using a regulator you have to uh, develop you have to uh, supply that um, that five volts voltage from outside okay uh, that's the thing you have to supply the voltage by outside uh, uh, but uh, if you are working with arduino so arduino you are not um, most of the time you are not supplying uh, voltage by outside because uh, uh, when you are connecting it through a usb it will supply that five volts uh, need for the circuitry most of the time right but uh, even to actually at least uh, actually even to uh, right uh, switch on an led with big microcontroller you have to supply that power because for the microcontroller also you have to supply power and for so that master clear you have to supply the power right 
like that If we see the mitochondrial operation, right, when we turn on the power supply, right, um, so what it does is it disables the all other circuits, but except the crystal oscillator, right. Uh, be, in, before, uh, before we, before everything starts, right, so this is like you know, how it boots. So it disables all other circuits except the crystal oscillator, right. Uh, okay, and then the because everything will start after the oscillator frequency becomes stable, right? So uh, first, what it does is it makes the oscillator frequency stable, right? Then okay. So then SFR, so you know SFR, so they are being filled with the bits reflect in the state of all circuits within the mitochondria. So it is obvious, right? Uh, so all pins, are, they are configured uh, inputs or outputs, right? Uh, then uh, the overall electron starts operation in rhythm with clock pulse sequence. Why we call it rhythm with clock pulse means um, the uh, the program counter right so there's a program counter program counter and uh, it will count it will count that means it will start the program so program count is set to zero and the instruction from that address is sent to instruction decoder okay so program counter that is say i counts the uh, program lines and and it is the instruction they are sent to the instruction decoder so what uh, in instruction decoder does is it recognize the instruction and executes it execute it right so after this program counter starts the instruction so it will send it to the instruction decoder right and after sending it to the instruction decoder it will recognize the instruction and ex it will execute it with immediate effect so so it's then uh, the program count is incremented by several millions per seconds means so according to the clock signal because most of the clock signals they are almost all the clock signals actually they are in the range of micro second range right microsecond range so therefore it will start um, the time difference between two instruction will be very small so if you can remember when we are writing the codes in mp lab you will you have seen that in order to have a very small uh, delay also we have to write a, some kind of a larger code and uh, then uh, when we are talking about the microcontroller programming right <clears throat> so as i have told you when we implement a, or when we are going to implement a circuitry in uh, using pic microcontroller right? uh, the thing that i told you is first of all we have to simulated then we have to implement so like that uh, when before we write in a microcontroller program uh, there should be several things that we need to consider right uh, so using the syntax right using the syntax we are writing the code right? we are writing the code 
but actually before writing the code right so it is not like so when you were given a problem so it is not like you are going to do it by uh, uh, you, are, you are going to code it immediately so by just seeing it you are just going to code it it's not like that right so first of all you have to write the general algorithm okay? so general algorithm is so this says so uh, the the entire process that should happen step by step okay? step by step that means uh, so uh, actually why we why we are using the programming languages so we are we are trying to write our uh, we are we are trying to explain our code to the computer so explain that the code to our, uh, code to a computer means we are trying to uh, write it um, uh, in a way that computer understands so that's why we call that uh, computer uh, programming programming language right uh, but actually what we need this general idea so in that general idea that idea can be uh, written in two methods right one is called the pseudo codes right and the other one is the flow charts so pseudo codes means it is a way of writing the algorithm right you are just writing it without using the correct syntax but it should have the current correct idea so what you want to achieve so if this happens you, you are going to do this if the so like that and uh, this process should run uh, up to infinity so like that you are going to write then the other method is you can use uh, flow charts you can use uh, flow charts so if we see what is the pseudo code right so actually uh, before you before you go to the computer and we start programming what you have to do is you have to draw a flow chart or you have to write your pseudo code so okay so yes yeah, pseudo code is an informal language that helps programmers uh, develop algorithm. <coughs> uh, pseudo code is very similar to everyday English and uh, can be understood by anybody who knows English. Eh? So that's true, right? So uh, here we are writing it using this is like just how we write it. Uh, we are not using the correct syntax, so therefore we cannot run a pseudo code. Right? We cannot run a pseudo code, but what we can then do is. Uh, <laughs> What we can do is we can uh, write our general idea using this uh, pseudo code. <coughs> so when you are writing uh, pseudo codes, right? So here, mm, we'll see. So we can use um, if then else and if condition statements okay right so here if uh, according to the condition then uh, what should happen right so else what should happen right right and this uh, and if uh, if statement here switch on so then stand bulb on else turn the bulb off so like that so here this is the pseudo code and yeah you cannot uh, you cannot run this in the computer right so you can understand that by now you cannot run this pseudo code in a computer but what you can do is uh, you can understand this this thing can be understood by anyone uh, actually the uh, uh, when you when you program uh, when you program, uh, what should be doing is actually uh, uh, the the hard part is writing this algorithm. Right? So if you got the al algorithm correctly, uh, writing the program is actually it is very simple thing. 
so if we take a look at another thing so while do iteration right so here you can see um, while uh, water level is less than height of the tank you have to supply the water to the tank and measure the water level and do so after that, that what you do is stop supplying water to the tank uh, if it goes the otherwise if the water level is larger than no if it is equal to the height of the tank you should do stop supply mm -hmm. and also right there are like four statement right so for statement we take a look at so yeah for initial value uh, so here you can understand so for time equals zero to time is less than 10 uh, time will be multiplied by plus uh, sorry incremented by one so delay of one minute ring the bell so like that so this is the statement Okay, this is the statement. Okay, so another one go to right. So go to label right. Okay. Uh, so read this temperature value from sensor display the temperature value go to step one so it says do these things continuously right? do these things continuously. so this is like a code uh, that you are going to write for a um, lcd screen lcd display like that so i'll show you an example as well right so here, uh, write an algorithm to determine a student's final grade and indicate whether it is passing or failing based on the average marks of two subjects. Right? <clears throat> so here, you can write. So first step one is input marks of two subjects. Right? Okay. And step two, calculate the average by summing them and dividing by two. Right? And then comes the logic. Right. Like if average is below 50, then print fail, else print pass and end if. End if means uh, end in the if statement. Okay, so here yeah, this cannot be executed, right? This cannot be executed, but it can be, it can be written. Um, It can be written and it can be understood by anyone. Right? Okay, so then as an example, control of an uh, air conditioner right so what should happen is so first of all um, you set the temperature right 
I set the temperature and if the set temperature is like less than the um what we call it as the uh, the um, actual uh, temperature you have to uh, like we have to switch on the compressor right and so by thinking it like this right thinking like this so um, yeah, like this right okay so like this thinking it like this uh, can you write the pseudo code right so you don't need uh, knowledge on um, uh, programming right so can you uh, try to write a pseudo code pseudo code means like this right step one what you are doing step two what you are doing and if there are uh, if statement you can use so like that uh, can you try to write it so i'll give you a few minutes set the temperature and if the set temperature is less than the actual temperature actual temperature means the temperature that you are reading right so switch on the compressor right so there should be few things right mm, few things so like uh, as an example if you set like uh, celsius 1 or something let's say maybe maybe you are uh, uh, let's say you are you are you are, you are, you are reducing the temperature uh, reducing the temperature uh, until like let's say like five celsius so it shouldn't be valid right and also there's something to like uh, read the temperature right there should be you have to read the temperature and also uh, there should be like switch on temperature switch on compressor commands and those kind of things as well in your code right so i will give you a few minutes and i'll get back to you so can you do this example first
Okay, so hope you have uh, finished. <laughs> so here, uh, this is a sample exam example number two. So, so this shouldn't be the case, right? Uh, you can write it as you want. So this is one of the method that you can write. Okay. <clears throat> so here, uh, first of all, so input um, the set temperature value, right? So set temperature value means so we are setting the value. So uh, so I have put something to validate as well, right? So then using this if statement right so if valid set temperature is given right so let's say um, so this is like you can set the temperature value right so let's say uh, here for the for this air conditioner we can go maximum up to like uh, uh, 19 right 19 celsius so if it is 19 so then if it is between let's say between 19 and uh, 19 and the uh, 26 let's say that so if it is in that range then go to step 3 step 3 means go to this step right so what is that step is so I read temperature input from the temperature uh, sensor right um, so that means that we have to read the temperature that existing temperature right and if the set temperature is less than the input uh, temperature input temperature input means the um, the current temperature right then activate compressor and fans right or else deactivate compression and pants and uh, here and if statement uh, then uh, go in here if it is else so go to uh, step one that means so we are pausing to insert a valid uh, temperature value okay then here uh, after end if uh, then uh, go to step three step three means so read the temperature input from the temperature sensor right so this one anyone can write this you don't need um, you don't need uh, knowledge of programming language in order to write this thing Okay, so anything you need want to add? So that is a basic thing, right? So that is actually how uh, air conditioner works. Okay, so then uh, we will move on to the next type, right? Uh, 
uh, using a flow chart right so flow chart it is a graphical representation right uh, of the flow of the program flow of operation in a program right so this will give us a sequence of instructions in a program uh, using different symbols and shapes right? so there are dedicated uh, different uh, symbols and shapes right <coughs> and uh, these symbols have these symbols have uh, different meanings so we cannot use a, um, all the we cannot uh, use the symbols as we want right so i will show you some of the common flowchart symbols so start and so you may know these things already right so flowchart so you may have drawn so this is this is how it should look when you are drawing the start uh, o end symbol then yeah this is for the input this is the input uh, so the previous one right? uh, then uh, when you are doing a, a process or a calculation this should be like this so here find the average marks on plus marks to divide by two right? then here when you are doing a decision so uh, so here you are going to this uh, one by this line so we are coming to the program then it will check uh, the temperature right a set temperature is less than the sensor input so if it is true you will go in this way if it is false you will go in this way right like that so when you're taking decision so it should be like this in this shape uh, then let's say you put some output output means uh, you want to print something right so like this okay so or oh, light led and activate a relay so something like that uh, so this is an uh, this is how you represent an output okay present an output okay and uh, another thing uh, this connector connector means um, when you are connecting the connecting one into another that means so here this thing is ended in here right ended in here then it is starting in here like that it goes Okay, so if you see the main things,
there are different shapes also right so if you represent that our first program first example and here you can see here we are starting from here right start so then you have marks right marks uh, uh, input yeah right? input we have a mark uh, input right uh, then uh, you have the uh, process right you have the process um, you have the process um, uh, or calculation average equal marks one plus marks two divided by two right then uh, what you are getting in there is the average right so then what you are doing is if you are checking this average with 50 if it is less than 50 uh, you will say uh, that means uh, it is the the true statement is if it is true if average is less than 50 it is true so they have a print fail right and if uh, this is false so the statement is uh, the output will be uh, print pass okay so then the, this is the end right? so like that uh, so this is a start start end uh, here this is the input and uh, here is the process and here this is the decision and here this is the output Okay, so okay, so this thing will give us more understanding than the pseudo codes, right? So just by looking at this one, we can do, we can understand a lot. So can you try to uh, do the same thing for that example number two? If you can remember, so I will then I'll show you that one yeah step one set input temperature value right if a valid temperature is given then what you have to do is you have to read the temperature from sensor then if it is um, larger than the set temperature you have to activate compressor otherwise you have to deactivate right um, then in here this else statement go to step one means uh, you have to validate whether it is um, whether the temperature is uh, correct um if it is uh, if it is incorrect right if incorrect then uh, you have to go to here again input uh, a correct or valid temperature value right and here here after finishing this so you have to go to step three so read temperature input from temperature sensor right um so by looking at this one right um Okay, so I think you can remember this. So uh, can you put that one quickly into this uh, into a flow chart? Example number two. So remember, there should be like uh, one place that uh, so first you have to start right. Then you have to input the set temperature. Then you have to validate. So that means you have to take a decision true or false right so then if it is true or false so if it is true uh, you have to um, you have to input the uh, temperature you have to get the input of the temperature uh, sensor reading right then you have to take an, again a decision right if it is true you have to activate compression fans false you have to dictate the activate compression fans right so using the symbols in here also so there should be like two decision statements right so first in order to check whether it is valid temperature second one is uh, to uh, activate or deactivate the compression fans right? so can you try to do that for example number two i'll give you a few minutes
okay so i'll uh, show you the is right so yeah um, start right then uh, the input is uh, set temperature right set temperature then you have to check whether uh, the valid set tem temperature is set value is valid right so if it is a valid uh, set temperature uh, so that means it is true so that means the program uh, continues right so if it is false so you have to go back in here to input a set temperature mm -hmm. input a set temperature so here you can see here you have uh, the connector right connector me so from this page you are going to do next page so i think you can understand this part so start is here right so after start you are in you input a set temperature so then if uh, the set temperature is valid then you continue otherwise you are um, telling to uh, input valid set temperature <coughs> right so that is the first step then uh, <coughs> so this is the connector right then um, input um, the uh, sensor reading right so this is uh, from the sensor reading this is not the value that we input by the controller right so here input you have a okay uh, a temperature sensor reading right so then you are checking whether that set temperature is less than the sensor temperature right so if it is true if it is true you activate so this is the um, output activate compression fan so otherwise you deactivate the uh, fan right so uh, after so after doing all these things so you it doesn't matter whether it is true or false so after both of these things you are going to read the uh, temperature you are going to read the temperature in here okay um okay so if we take a can uh, example right so that is a simple example um, about writing the uh, Okay. 
Okay, this is uh, one of the example, right? Uh, design the circuitry to interface all system components to the microcontroller in an air condition, right? So when you are doing this thing, right? Uh, so here, design the circuitry to interface uh, 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 interface all the system components to the microcontroller in an air condition, right? So here, so what you are doing is, uh, so it says com components, switches, remote controller, temporary sensors, LCD displays, relays. Um, uh, my, uh, so everything you have to include it in here, right? So after that, what you do is you have to write the program to perform its function. So that's the basic thing, right? And uh, one other thing that you have to understand is, uh, so here. Excuse uh, me, sir. Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Sir, screen a pain in it. Okay, cannot see. Okay, so here, uh, this is an example, right? So design the circuitry to interface all the system components to the microcontroller uh, in an air conditioner. Right? So this is the question, right? This is the question. So what we need is, uh, we need switches, remote controllers, temperature sensors, LCD displays, and uh, everything we need, right? But so when we when we are talking about, right? When we are talking about uh, uh, an air conditioner, right? So there's like compressor and fans as well, <coughs> right? Compressor and fans also. So when you have those kind of things, do we need in order to build this system, right? So if you ask to design the circuitry in here, do we need those compressors or fans? No, right? So what you need is basically, basically here, uh, here you need switches, right? So in order to address the remote controller also, you can have a, a input mechanism. It doesn't have to be a remote controller, right? And uh, here you need temperature sensors, right? and uh, you need the LCD displays. And here to control compressor and fans, you don't have, you don't need compressor fans and fans, right? What you need is, you need relay. So relay is some kind of uh, a switch. So you can control, a controllable switch. So relay is controllable switch. So like like that, right? So as an, um, as an example, when you have uh, when you have to operate, uh, when you have to operate, so like, uh, uh, let's say the water tank, water uh, controller. So at that time, so you don't need a water pump or you don't need a mechanism uh, to uh, switch off the, uh, um, so you don't need a water pump, right? Why is that? Because, uh, or you don't need a uh, water tank at least. Why is that is? So you are doing the circuit, right? So we are not looking at the expect uh, the thing as a whole thing, right? So what you are looking at is looking at the microcontroller viewpoint. So uh, if you have to control combustion and fan, so relay is enough, right? So if to control uh, compressor, you need one relay. To control fans, you need another relay. So like that. Uh, so that's what you need. <clears throat> so otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise it it will be difficult, right? So after doing these things, so you can write the program in order to perform its function, right? Uh, because in order to test it, uh, at least we need these sensors and uh, the actuator so sensors are like the temperature sensors and the humidity sensors so likewise and the relays and those things we, that we call as the actuators where we give output so here if you see so this is the air conditioning system so it has a lot of things but when you are looking at the expect of the view of a microcontroller we can uh, here this compressor and this fan you are represented by a just a um, just a relay right because we need only the controlling part of that <clears throat> ok 
okay so these are the few applications of microcontroller based system so we have done this one already Okay, so then these are things that we have uh, done these things uh, previously. We have taken a look at these things. So then uh, uh, some kind of like, uh, so these are the co computer systems, right? So then uh, if you take a look at um, a domestic system, so door locks, uh, air conditioning, TV remote control, so everything you have this kind of things, then the appliances. And the other appliances, home appliances. Then in telecommunications, so this kind of application, so main thing is cellular phones. And uh, yeah, these things, sentry, anti-lock breaking, engine management and airbags. So like these kind of things and uh, these things as well. So, piece automation and industrial control. So, these are the main applications of this uh, microcontrollers. Okay, and uh, then um, so actually um, from uh, this 
one we'll finish for what you know to for today right uh, we'll uh, share this powerpoint presentation in that google drive right so if you have any questions you can ask and uh, uh, i'll try to do a few examples uh, from uh, next time right the thing is actually when we have uh, uh, when we have these um, uh, pick material and everything so it is better if you can do it uh, in lab actually uh, because um, because uh, as i have told you the question in here is uh, we need a power supply right power supply so otherwise everything that can be done right and you need a programmer uh, apart from uh, the micro c software so that, those are the things uh, and uh, we'll take a look at uh, on um, uh, arduino as well right so i think most of you know arduino and uh, in order to do programming with Arduino, it is very easy, right? Not like PIC, but you can learn many things when you are working with uh, PIC microcontroller. So with that one, we'll um, uh, finish for today, right? So uh, we'll stop in the class for today. Thank you for listening, right? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.